And we are underway here inside of Finley Stadium. Charlotte sending it down to the far end right away. Great looking unis here tonight. Um, well, we talked. You and I both took this before the game, and then we talked for a long time too, and he said basically that it would get in rotation. Um, some of the more well-known names you aren't going to see playing tonight, they're getting a rest, and don't obviously do anything silly and pick up an injury uh, before we go to Michigan Stars and then go to the playoffs. So you'll see some players you haven't seen too often playing, and that's great, so what these guys is to get some playing time, and that's good for them. The same thing um, for the Charlotte team. They've got a bench of 13 players. These are all young lads, maybe high school age, a bit older, so they're all going to get experience too um, because next pro hasn't started yet officially for the 2023 season for Charlotte or some of these teams. So and here we go okay. on the far side. A bit of a chance for Chattanooga trying to oh, battle it is. down in there and Dorchin able and a to penalty send kick. that one away. Referee points at the spot. Gives a yellow card to the goalkeeper in the second minute. Did you see that? Dorchin comes out and, and has to try and do something right there and he picks does. up the penalty kick. He does. That's big time for CFC to start this one off. Let's see that. Can we see that again? Here we go. Put a nickel in the machine. Here we go. So Luke Ferreira makes the turn, gets away, and the keeper just takes him out. And referee points at the spot straight away. Roddy Green right there, too. Ferreira so. starting his eighth game here tonight this season. Chris Bermudez on the on the spot. See if Chris can put this one away, give Chattanooga an early lead. Here we go. Bermudez winds up, yeah. fires, and he'll find the back of the net for the Chattanooga Football Club goal. It's 1-0 here in the scenic city. <laughs> Look at that celebration. That is quite a start. <laughs> I'm not sure Charlotte are expecting that one. Chris Bermudez gets his goal. Great to see that. I've always enjoyed watching Chris play. Nice to see him get the reward. He's pumped, you can tell. So, Charlotte on the back foot. There's another look at that one right yeah, there. Keeper goes the wrong way completely. So, I guess this is all part of the training for the Charlotte players to learn how to come back from the end goal down. Well, absolutely. And Marvin Dorchin, you know, he comes out and he, he forces the penalty kick right there. Mm -hmm. But what else is he supposed to do? You have to try and stop that. You do. Uh, but he's going to be on a yellow card for the whole game because he's going to have to be really careful with his goalkeeping and not be more aggressive. So I suspect they've got a reserve keeper on the bench and will be playing the second half. So we'll see. But yeah, I mean, this is part of the learning a bit of soccer play. You have to, how do you come back from your goal now? We've seen Chattanooga do it. It doesn't just happen by chance. It happens because they know how to do it. They've got mental fortitude. They've got skills. So Charles turn to see how they do. Absolutely. See? Tonight's broadcast here between Chattanooga Football Club and Charlotte Football Club next to brought to you by Coca-Cola. Thank you for tuning in and joining us here on 11 Sports. Sending this one back into play. Chattanooga back on the attacking end of the pitch already here. Yeah, it's uh, good to see Chattanooga, even the, the, the guys don't play as much, getting some playing time and playing the same way the regular starters do. Good to see. Um, but yeah, we, we talked to Robin Wood about this and we discussed the game, you know, before we came on the air and just, yeah, there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of chances, probably a lot of substitutions, so bear with us as we get the substitutions covered. Uh, everybody gets a lot of playing time. Um, and bear with us if we uh, miss somebody from Charlotte, they're playing in grey shirts with no names on the back, so... Bear with us, folks. We'll do our best. <laughs> Big time fan of this move by the MLS to bring in these these next teams, these next up programs, and continue to the growth of soccer across the United States mm -hmm. and worldwide. That's a big next step, don't you think? Absolutely. We, we talked about that, too, at teams in Europe and South America have reserve teams, and a lot of times reserve teams play each other behind closed doors. One's in an area. They don't spend a lot of money traveling, but uh, I know when I was in England, uh, the reserve team played behind closed doors like Wednesday nights and the regulars played Tuesday and Saturday. So, um, But yeah, it's interesting to see. It gives them a chance to develop, as they say, without too much pressure on them. Um, and you find that a lot of people and scouts will come and watch the uh, reserves and maybe pick up somebody who's been overlooked by a coach. Um, that happens quite often. So 
So it's, it's a good way if you well, people will sign, they'll sign a lot of players, obviously, and then, you know, whittle it down for the ones they really need. Um, but a lot of times, yeah, you'll see that. People will pick them out of the reserves, and you're like, who's this? And then they're really good, they're just hidden away <laughs> behind the scenes. So, um, so yeah, these reserve teams are really good, and the more practice they get, that's great. You know, every soccer player wants to play as much as possible, you know that. Especially these guys who are 18, 19, they want to play like dawn to dusk, and then some more. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, you know, it's great for them. And the A squad for Charlotte has reached full time against Philadelphia. They came up with a 4 nothing win. Yeah, Charlotte has been a very big success in MLS in their first season. I've been very impressed with them. So, hopefully we'll get to maybe see them here again sometime. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're going really, really well. It's a great addition to the MLS, and that's always good to see. Absolutely. This is a fun one here tonight. I think it is. We're going to see some things tried that maybe they don't normally play in the league game. People taking a few chances in different formations. Maybe some long shots and, you know, other halfway across the pitch. Who knows? <laughs> so <laughs> That's always fun. So, yeah, this will be the uh, the last home game here at Chattanooga until we have the playoffs in the first game, as I said. Uh, Nisa play for us is done. Home. Um, so, I mean, nevertheless, you've got your season ticket, they'll still get you into this game. Um, the playoffs, I think, are not as covered by the season ticket, you have to, I can't remember, find out on that, for sure if they are covered with season ticket holders, but um, nevertheless, if you want to see that game, that'll be good. I don't know who you're going to be playing against yet, but it's going to be interesting. It's going to be somebody who's good to have got to the semi-finals. Absolutely. So it's going to be a great game, and the atmosphere will be great. Um, I've already heard the hooligans are going to dress up in Halloween costume. Oh, boy. That'll so... Be kind of makes um, sense. It'll be on October Halloween. 30th. If you, yeah. So if you don't want to miss that, <laughs> that's the reason to come out on its own. No kidding. <laughs> you can get full ticket information, preview of the contest, and recaps of already concluded contest for Chattanooga FC by visiting the club's website. Yep, and get your tickets at cfctix.com. Clearing kick here, sent away by Chattanooga. Long one up the pitch, and Charlotte FC gonna get back to work with it. It's still 1-0 here in the scenic city after that early score by Chattanooga. Working this one up to the far side. For Chimus with it there. Battling just along the touchline. Could be a bit of a chance for Charlotte. There's the cross kick, and this one is headed away carefully by Chattanooga. That's uh, Tate Robertson doing his magic there, number two. Keeping it clear. Tate was in here on Wednesday. So I'm a Jackless. It's great to speak for him. So, uh, long feed to the close side here. It's also good to see Juan Hernandez play the game too. You know he wants to play, he's having to not <laughs> play as much as he used to, and it's great to see Juan playing in the Chattanooga shirt. Yeah, this Chattanooga club has a lot of depth, and have you seen the, the club develop and and get more depth on the roster mm -hmm. for your time here covering have, and following the program? I certainly have, yeah. It's, since been, this has been one of the best years we've had for depth. It's been really, really good. And, uh, Boy, yeah, it looked like a chance there did, before they it? called it off. A chance there for Luke, but it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of players that can ch change places, play each other's positions, and that's really good to have too. Um, what you want to have is, you know, cover for each position, if you can do. And this year we have that. So if somebody's not gets a knock or is hurt, it doesn't matter. Their, their backup steps in place on the backup starts. It varies, but yeah. And I think that's shown in the results we've had. Here we go. Great Chattanooga again, building a little convoy here. Great interception. Along the far side, could be a chance. Blast one towards the net there, and it's just high and wide. Yeah. Alex Hernandez with that one, a little bit uh, laid back a bit. And, but again, Chattanooga getting space to get the shots in. And what we're seeing, of course, with Charlotte, they're, they're still in the same the second game they've played, the, the next pro team, so they're still gelling. So we have to give them credit for that. They're still, you know, getting used to each other. Yeah, they don't Which, look bad. No, not at all. It takes time to do that. Um, and one of the things 
as you'll, you'll know, for anybody who watches soccer, they'll hear the, the coaches talk before a game, after a game, and a lot of them say before a game, they look great in practice, um, and then because they practice against each other, that's different from playing against another team. Him Rodriguez gets round, gets pulled in the back, and I think that's another court, another penalty kick. Oh it is. Oh my goodness! Already. Yeah, Damon Rodriguez using his speed, catching out the Charlotte players, and uh, referee's trying to find his, find his yellow cards. We indicate the shirt pull. As you saw, Damien got his replay. Watch Damien Here's get pulled in the back. His speed, he gets away from them. They're just like, I can't stop this guy. Look at that. Boy. Yeah, that's a straight shirt pull. So, another penalty kick. That's uh, two in ten minutes. And Chris Bermudez looking for goal number two. So, so again, do a lesson there. Got to learn how to stop a player who's faster than you in the box. So. Chattanooga FC looking to extend their lead to 2 0. Let's see what Bermudez does, which way he goes left or right. Dorchin standing ready. Bermudez fires a shot, and this one will go in as well. It's 2 0, Chattanooga Football Club. Same shot into the left hand side. And uh, the goalkeeper gets it right, but. Can't stop it because Chris buries it deep in the corner. 2 0 Chattanooga after 11 minutes. And there's another look at that one. Here it goes. See, left corner, keeper gets it, but can't touch it. Wow. All right. Looking oh. a bit uphill for Charlotte here. <laughs> and Mr. Bermudez has to be just thrilled. Oh, yes. Well, Chris has, you know, I've always watched Chris <laughs> play. And he's got, some, yeah, I've always thought he had tons of potential. Now he's getting his chance to show it. So that's great. So we'll play, Chris. Halfway through this 12th minute, do nothing the score in favor of Chattanooga. Charlotte FC trying to get something going here won't last long. Well, we talked to Coach Underwood before the game. Do you think that he is he relishes opportunities like this to get his guys out in a live action situation, oh, try out new things? Absolutely. Well, I was saying before that foul was I mean, a lot of coaches play. Uh -oh. Could be another again. chance here for Chattanooga. Again. Set inside, there's a shot Loose and ball. saved away by Dorchin. Another chance, he Good. gets some help out front there. Good block. So, but yeah, a lot of teams will play each other in, in scrimmages and in practice, and then the coach thinks they look good, and they come up against a team that has a different style, a different techniques, and they, and they look terrible. We've seen that before. Any any team will see at the top, even you know, Liverpool, Chelsea, look, oh, they look good in practice, you know, so-and-so's playing really well. And then they come out and they get just beaten up because <laughs> the other team has a different technique and they're just not ready for it. So playing other teams is, is really the best way to practice. Like this. So this is, oh, it's a friendly, it's not wasted. It's good, good use of time. Could be another comes chance Luke for again. Chattanooga right here. Centering kick and this one deflected away by Jack Neely. He's looking good defensively. I think he made the block Absolutely. on that last attempt as well. So, yeah, See, that, was, that was Roddy Green. So Roddy came across, Luke was in the box, they changed places. <laughs> but yeah, good run by Roddy, using his speed there. So, so we've got another Chick-fil-A corner. We've got Bermudez and Hernandez going for this corner. Let's see if they play it short or long. Uh, let's see if they go for short one. Here we go. Swings it in. And this down. one deflected away carefully by Charlotte FC. Good defensive effort there. Charlotte finding themselves in a lot of dangerous moments here early. Does that build up over time? Does that wear on them, or do you think they'll settle down? I think they'll settle down, but it's, it's unsettling when you keep getting defenders running behind you and getting shots in and and then two two yellow cards back to back is unnecessary really it's uh so i'm sure the coach will have words about that and tell them to you know control themselves better but like i said there's development team development means you make errors you learn you go on it's like I so mean, we've, all, we've all been at this stage learning the game right yeah so this, absolutely this, this, is, this is their point go ahead sorry I was just going to say, Rod made a lot of changes uh, mm -hmm. against the Flower City. You know, he really changed things up for 
for the, the starting 11. Brett Jones joined the lineup. Mm -hmm. Nick Spielman slotted in the back line. Tate Robertson, who was suspended, was in the lineup. Yeah. And Kevin Gonzalez between the post. Can yeah. you talk to me about those changes? And did they play a big impact in those those previous two contests? And do I you think, think we'll see more? They showed the depth of the squad. And it didn't. It looked pretty seamless, really, to me, honestly. The, the guys played together so well at this, this point in the season. So I think it made a lot of difference, really. Um, it was one or two changes, obviously one with Tate was forced because he's, you know, had the, the card suspension, but uh, the other ones, yeah, I mean, somebody can drop into Tate's position, and, you know, Travis Wall can drop in, Nick Spielman can drop in, no big deal. Yeah, so, and that perfectly fits with the theme of what we were just yeah. talking about, about, you know, how much meshing there is. Exactly. Now, here, here comes, comes Chattanooga Juan. again. Juan Hernandez gets it across. Sending, oh, oh no. looked inside right there and wow. just couldn't quite connect. Great look for Chattanooga. He was trying to go inside to Luke Ferreira right there. Yeah, it was right behind, just, just behind his step, and he couldn't get hold of it. But Juan Hernandez is still dangerous. <laughs> Charlotte done with this, trying to send it back. Yep. Four-hour, 41-minute drive, 341 miles to get from Charlotte, North Carolina to Chattanooga, Tennessee. That is the track that was made by this MLS Next squad to get here and play tonight. And they had bus trouble on the way, from what I understand. Oh, really? So, yeah, okay. they were able to get here on time. Well, so. Yeah, we saw them coming in, so I'm glad they made it. So. Battling for this one down along the touch line, and the whistle will sound. See, so if you're just joining us after 15 minutes, you missed two great goals already. <laughs> so Gorgeous you, goals. You've been at it to start. Um, but yeah, Chattanooga two up from two penalty kicks. So. Chattanooga playing a dangerous game here. Yeah, a little bit dangerous for that running to me. Could be casual. a chance for Charlotte. Uh, nope, Chattanooga cleaned up. Juan Hernandez cleans up. Chattanooga under control. Yeah. Still foul working to clean that one out. Yeah, a bit, bit of a foul, a bit of a pull on that one. So. Taken quickly. And back into play. Closing in on the 18th minute of play here. Well, you know, I think the players that are out there tonight, I mean, they really wanted to show what they can do. Uh, this is a chance to show, you know, Rod and Chris, hey, look at me, I should be a starter. Yeah, this, absolutely. This is, their, this is their big chance. So, I mean, like, you know, it's, it's exciting for them too. And, there's a whole lot That's of that happening on the pitch That's right now. Right this overlap. could and be a scoring Charlotte. chance again yeah, for sure. Chattanooga looking inside. He's going to send this oh. on net himself, and it rolled across the top oh, of the well, pipes. Chipped it in the far corner. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a great goal. <laughs> All right. Like I said tonight, worth knowing Rusty on the game. Let's watch this again. Are we going to see that again? It's, um, no, we're not. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. That was a beautiful chance oh, for Roddy right Green right, right there. Across. We're going to see things like that tonight because it's just friendly. So people are going to try stuff. A bit wacky, a bit wild. Like Taylor Gray sh long shot on the uh, in the second half of the game against Alpine, where just the keeper was out of the goal. We tried to lob it. So we're going to see things like that. Which Sometimes makes it, you got to let it hang out. Yeah, you do. It makes it exciting to watch. You pull it off, you're the hero. <laughs> 2-0 the tally here in the 19th minute of action between Chattanooga Football Club and Charlotte Football Club MLS Next Pro. Charlotte, ooh, could be a chance right here. Trying to deke his way down inside and has it taken away. There was a trio of Chattanooga Football Club defenders there. Yep, Charlotte looking a bit more dangerous. And we talked about that, that they could potentially settle down, get mm -hmm. into a groove, get some rhythm going, and yep. create some scoring chances. Now, Chattanooga has done this a few times yeah, already with the outlet passes. We've really created half a dozen scoring chances, and so uh, they know they can't mess around. So. Chattanooga wants to have their system, playing the triangles, keep the possession. Or on the woods, you know, technique is to keep possession, and they're doing that, doing it fine. So. Ethan Corrin there, playing some good defense. Great environment here tonight. 
Oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's lovely weather, it's dry, it's about 70 degrees, it's perfect really. Beautiful fall weather for playing soccer. So, yep, it's, it's great. No kidding, we're closing in on dropping below 70 degrees here during game time. Perfect hoodie and front yeah, row weather. It is. Had a little collision there, looks to be all right. Yeah, Damien got a knock, I think he's, he's made a tough start. He's had a few knocks over the season. <laughs> Brian Carmona Romero sending that one back in. Now Dorchin with it. Yeah, good control by the keeper. So, uh, Chattanooga going to get to work with this one here. Long feed down the pitch. Yep, that's a good ball. Rodriguez chases it, but he's caught offside. Mm. You can see the flag up. That was a close one. It was. Damien Speed again, he just takes off and he gets a lot of those. What a great rainbow ball pass mm -hmm. upfield right there as well. Absolutely. Slightly Ethan Corbin's pass in the back and just Fernandez flipped it over. Yep. Good stuff. <laughs> and right now over the public address they are plugging that playoff game that will be played here on Sunday, October 30th. Chattanooga FC yep. and an unknown opponent. Those are always great games. I don't forget Chattanooga's won, when we were in the NPSL we won the playoffs six, seven times. So it's <laughs> not unfamiliar to us here, let's say that. <laughs> so... It's, uh, but it's always, each year, it's always exciting. It never loses its edge. Absolutely. Well, it was fun catching up with Rod before the game. He was all smiles and having a good time. Do you think, uh, what do you think his strategy is going to be going up to Michigan and playing against the Stars on the 15th? Well, obviously, you want to come over the win and be in a positive frame of mind. Um, the Stars are hard to, to score against. They're very good at parking the bus and getting a nil-nil game. Um, but uh, they want points. I mean, they want to improve their standings, um, improve their playoff place. They, can, they can't get the bye if they can get a better playoff place. So um, they may come out and start playing. We might be able to get some goals on them. We'll see. But um, hard to predict. We'll get the Chick-fil-A corner kick here. Juan Hernandez sending this one inside. Five golden. CFC jerseys parked in front of the net. They're just going to dip it in from the edge over the touchline here instead. Tried for the cross kick and it was deflected away. The corner. So yeah, everybody's up in the box, in Charlotte's box, just uh, Greg Stratton, Ethan Corrin hanging out. Keep control of the defense, of course. Out of range and way at the back. Siri, the one who forced that out of play right there. We'll see if they Try a similar tactic or go for the cross right here. We've got Spielman up in the box with green and tall guys, but that one goes short and doesn't uh, end the box at all. <laughs> yeah, Siri with another good defensive play yep. takes that away, and now Charlotte's on the move. You see Charlotte break, Corrin chasing out one down. He's got support already. Chattanooga flooding back. Take Robertson getting back. No, Rodriguez getting back. So. Ooh, battling it down along the close side. Had some space and time there, just couldn't gather it in quickly enough to get an opportunity. Look to center it up. Yep, Rodriguez down, pushing the back. Oh, there's an unhappy, unhappy player. I think he's going to get a card for that. It's not, not too cool. Yeah, and we've talked about this a little bit. These are young guys. Oh, Chris Rodriguez went down. Sorry, not, uh, not Damien. Yeah, pushing the back and then <laughs> unhappy about the decision. But that's probably where a word is better than a card because, yeah, they are learning. I believe that's Braden Keenan you're looking at there, just based on the formation. Okay. Yeah, it's a tricky one without the names in the back of the shirts. <laughs> for our, Especially for our old eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, trying to make a break and a shot on goal, but uh, a field goal. He got the and field the goal. Got the field goal. There we go. 25 minutes played, and so still 2-0 two, two Chattanooga. 
Oh, that was a good chance for Charlotte off. right there. Yeah, she got a good chance, just uh, a little bit uh, too anxious with the shot. Trying to make something happen. And that lovely turn there from Tate Robertson. That's a beautiful turn. Feed through there. Turn Hernandez. Here could be a chance again for Chattanooga. Got a little yeah. bit of a convoy going. Slows it up momentarily, driving down <laughs> inside of the box. This one set on net and Dorchin gathers it. Boy, good play by the keeper. Let's take a second bite to hold it. <laughs> no kidding. So uh, yeah, good play from Chattanooga. Well, playing goaltender has to be one of the most difficult positions in all of sports. Talked about this a lot, you know, mm -hmm. between ice hockey and, and soccer. Right. And the comparison is always football and quarterback. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine the pressure standing mm -hmm. between the pipes down there? Sure, you're the last person before the goal goes in. So it's it's a whole different ball game. Keepers are a yeah, different breed from what I've heard. No kidding. <laughs> You've got to be in a special space mentally to be yep. able to make those plays. Ready to throw yourself on the, onto the hard ground, stop the ball. <laughs> yeah, we had uh, even, I could tell at school when I was playing, learning to play, and people that would throw themselves on the ground, I'm like, that's hurting. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's like, oh, it's fine. I'm like, okay. And they were just different kind of people. <laughs> Sellout saves or something special. There's nothing quite like yeah, it. A good ball. Can we make a break? Chattanooga trying to come through. Chattanooga's got a bit of a chance, but Dorchin will clear this one away. Good, good right foot he's got, isn't it? <laughs> and he finds his man. He's looking good early, making all the mm -hmm. right plays. He is. I say that they do trail 2-0 to Chattanooga here, but mm -hmm. if you're just joining us, those both came off of penalty kicks. Thank you for being with us here tonight on 11 Sports. Yep, great to have you along. Thanks for being here for a friendly game. It's very entertaining so far, I've got to say, Gabe. Very entertaining. Lots of fun. Yep. Love the high scoring. Would sure. love to see some more goals both ways. Here we here go. We go. Hey. Chance for Chattanooga. Robertson. Set to the back door, and this yes. one is buried. It's 3-0 yeah. Chattanooga Football Club. What a play. St. Robertson. <laughs> the way across to Roddy Green. And here's another look at this one. He just buries it in the back of the net. Boy, that was a great pass. What a great pass from Tate. And then here, one touch. Bam. Roddy Green looking sharp yeah. here at home inside of Finley Stadium in the 28th minute as it is 3-0. Great to see Rod again in the goal. He's had so many moments where he hasn't. He's been close, and that's it's great to see him just put his foot through that one. <laughs> nice one, Roddy. Absolutely blistered the ball and route to that score. 3 0. What does Charlotte Gare do next? They got to try something. Now, but Simon, what could have Charlotte done to have prevented that score? They left a lot of gaps in the side. They didn't. The defenders didn't get back on time. They left a gap for him to break through, and he's able to come around that one defender. He's able to fit the ball around and use his speed and acceleration. And uh, I think that's what caught them out. But yeah, the coverage, they were they pushed up a lot. Even the defenders have pushed up in the midfield a bit too far. And they haven't held back and kept their position. And they should have stayed back in formation, but they didn't. And so they get punished. So. Well, it was a beautiful pass across by Tate yep. Robertson right that's there. Great. Love green. That. Yep. Tate's been doing that a lot all through the season, just haven't noticed it as much, but tonight it really stands out. He's been doing a lot of that. So. Sending this one back in, Chattanooga FC taking their time. Another chance right there. And a long ball to Roddy. Roddy Fe feeds it inside, in. and this one is easily deflected away. And it's a goal kick. Alex Hernandez coming in on that one. Didn't quite get past the defender, but that's all right. Sure, get a second chance. <laughs> Jack Neely was able to run him out of play right there. Mm -hmm. Dorchin has to be thankful for that. Yep. Absolutely. Centering 
ball for Charlotte FC here, now to the close side. They're trying to get something going here. We've seen them bring some pressure at a few different points throughout this first half of action, and they've been struggling for the last few minutes to get down to the offensive end of the pitch. Gently. Oh, Ethan Collins pass intercepted, but cleaned up. Danny Lopez coming up here, bringing the heat. A long ball, nobody there for that one. That's all right. <laughs> it's all good. So 30 minutes in, Chattanooga three up. Good place to be mentally. As I say, it's a game it doesn't mean anything. It's friendly, but it's good for your you know, mental state to be leading. Good turnout here tonight. Yeah, good crowd. Yeah. I mean, the weather helps too. It's perfect weather. And it's been a lot of fan appreciation going on tonight too with uh, free scarves for the first 500 people to come in the door. And then there's been autograph signing. There'll be fireworks after the game too. So we'll, we hope we'll show you some of the fireworks when we close out tonight. I'd so love to see that. Yeah, it's been good stuff. So, because, uh, yeah, the people, that, the people that run the club know about the fans. You haven't got a club. <laughs> so tonight they're getting appreciation for the fans. I'm very impressed with the front office of this franchise. They've done a wonderful job connecting with go. this community. Oh, good tackle. Yeah, absolutely. Ever since we started the club, it's been like that, really. So Looks like Siri again coming in for the play defensively there for Charlotte FC. So Simon, we talked about uh, they gave out 500 free scarves here mm -hmm. tonight. Lots sure. of promotions going on. Yep. What would you tell somebody who's never been to a Chattanooga FC home game? What would they need to know before they came out to one? Um, what would they need to know? <laughs> Just hold that thought. Could have a yeah, chance really. here. Chattanooga centering ball, and this one is intercepted and cleared away by Charlotte. Another great defensive effort right there. Carmona Romero with the intercept. Well, Ethan Corrin fighting for it. Ethan Corrin winning it. Back to Reading. So, yeah, if they wanted to come on their first game and uh, just be prepared to enjoy yourself. Um, you can get food and drink here. You can get a great view of the games, many seat. There's no pre assigned seating, so just show up. If you don't like the seat you've got, just move. <laughs> uh, you can sit where it's quiet at the back of the stadium. You can sit with the hooligans and bang a drum. They'd love to have you. <laughs> um, you will find, be prepared to get addicted because a lot of people come to this and that they're just bit neutral about it and by the time they leave they're just like bug eye with excitement like wow when's the next game when's the next game so be prepared for that <laughs> so um yeah i mean you hear me talk about it every week and say it's you know why listen to us you can be in the stadium but i mean it it's, it's just a great atmosphere that's what got me hooked from the first game in 2009 it's never changed so and you'll meet might meet some people who are lifelong friends people who have met their spouses here uh, I've met a great bunch of friends here, so and we've been friends for a long time, and so be prepared for that. Be prepared to make new family, new friends. <laughs> Can't beat that. <laughs> Not really. It's just, you know. Oh, and some terrific soccer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Into the 34th minute now here inside of Finley Stadium, Chattanooga holds a three-nothing lead over Charlotte FC. Thanks for joining us on 11 Sports. Tonight's broadcast brought to you by Coca-Cola. Charlotte going to get a chance to work with the ball here now. Along the center of the pitch. Tried to feed it down inside, and this one intercepted carefully by the back line of Chattanooga there. Great play, great Wasn't stop. Wasn't that great? Yeah. Nick Spillman doing his magic again, just keeping it calm. I mean, it's it's familiar back line. It's not that different from what we've usually played. 
you've got you know Stratton, Spielman, Corin, Robertson in the back. They all all played before. Ethan not as much. The other guys have all played there before, so it's not uh, that experimental. <laughs> Charlotte FC, they launched their MLS team just this year. They broke the uh, record for MLS attendance in their home opener. So this pro team is the next step. It's the third division of U.S. soccer for 2023. Yeah, that record breaking was pretty impressive. Um, and the same thing happened at Atlanta joined MLS too, Atlanta United. And I remember people saying back then, there's no, ap no ap appetite for soccer in the South. I'm like, you what? <laughs> if you've been to the Chattanooga FC game or Atlanta game or now Charlotte or Nashville S SC, they get huge crowds. I'm like, yeah, I think it's that type of soccer in the South. <laughs> they were definitely wrong. But I remember those very clearly. People would say, oh no, nobody's going to come play in the South. You're wasting your time. It's all, it's all in the North. Up in the Northeast. Here's a chance for Charlotte. Oh, Whoa, off the crossbar. A big high bounce. That's their first serious shot of the game. Beat Alec Rillington just bounced off the crossbar. Good look right there. They're trying to keep it going, but Chattanooga able to pin down that attacker and force him out of play along the touchline there. We'll take yes. another look at this one, That's Simon. It. That was a good shot. In space and a good left footer. Yep, that made the goal shake. <laughs> I believe that's Denny Lopez firing that shot on net right there. First great look for Charlotte FC really coming was. in the 36th minute of play. Taking them all this time to get there, but that was that was good. So shows Chattanooga can't take the foot off the gas. Because things like that will happen if you do. Sending this one back and forth. Chattanooga working into the close touch line. Keeps in, wins the throw. Keenan tipped that out of play. Going to be sent back in by Robertson here. Well, do you think we'll see a lot of changes coming out of halftime? Oh, I'm pretty sure we will do, because um, they Rob wants to rotate the squad a little bit, you know, give everybody a chance to play who hasn't had as many minutes as they might have had during the season. Um, and like I said, at the start, Charlotte have bought 13 extra players. So maybe they'll do a complete rotation in the second yeah. half. They might just do that. And they're, you know, fresh legs. Now they're yellow card against Charlotte. Chris Bermudez gets, uh, gets flattened. Yeah, he's slow to rise here. Hopefully he's all right. So Two goals for him already here today. Yep, yep. Yep, great right to see Chris off the mark this season. With some goals. Um, yeah, and obviously it's a bit early for subs. They've got a couple of guys getting warmed up for, for Charlotte, but uh, nothing else right now. And Coach Rod hasn't got anybody at all that's watching the game. So Dorchin comes out to greet that one. And well, a bit uncertain, away. wasn't he? A little bit like, hmm, yeah. what shall I do? <laughs> Took his time grabbing that uh -huh. up. Yeah. I believe that was Roddy Green right in his face right there. I don't want Roddy Green right in my face, do you? No. <laughs> Especially if you're a goalkeeper. Uh -uh. If you're his friend, I'd love to have him well, in my that's face. Well, that's different. But <laughs> you're yeah. a goalkeeper. He's the last person I want right in front of me. Robertson trying to work this one along the touchline, and this will be sent out by Charlotte FC. Yeah. Good skill there. Keep winning winning throw-ins all the time. That's also a sign of a good defender and a winger. Back in the play to Juan Hernandez. Going to switch sides now, Chattanooga. There we go. And we're about to cross into the 40 minute, 40th minute of action here in this friendly competition tonight. Okay, we get taken quickly. Chattanooga back into play. Spillman to Corin to Hernandez. Back to Corin. He's been very confident on the ball he's been calling tonight. Got to say, he's looking good. Robertson might have something right here. Trying to look inside with it. Here comes Bermudez. 
Oh, trying to pick out. <laughs> you know who Siri on the with fastball. a good play. He was yeah. looking over there for Ronnie yeah, Green, nah, and Siri saw it coming. He's, he's figured that out. He's like, I've got to cover <laughs> this guy. I cannot let him get past me again. <laughs> and he's got it figured out. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure Dorchin had something to say to him. Hey, can oh, you help me out here? Yeah, really. Can you, can you, can you watch this guy? He's really fast on the left surf wing. <laughs> Charlotte back on the attacking end. Looking inside, centering pass, and this one gloved carefully by the netminder. That's a gorgeous save. Good save by Alec Rington, certainly was. He was right on top of that one. Got a chance That's to watch that. him warm up before the game. Looking good, looking sharp. Yeah, that was some good, good play there for Charlotte. They're starting to connect the passes and connect the dots, and that's what uh, we said they might settle down after the, you know, the early setbacks, the first two goals, and they seem to have started doing that. But uh, again, sometimes their defence just looks a little shaky. So, and that's when Freire and Green are gonna have a crack at it, I'm sure. Simon, are there any major differences in the play style of the goaltenders that Chattanooga FC carries on the roster here? In between Kevin and, and Alec? Um, not great, they're both really on the case. Uh, they're both very agile. They keep track of the game, you know, work the defenders hard, give good directions. So I find them both not totally similar, but both of a very high standard. Uh, I wouldn't say there's huge differences, no. They're both, both solid goalkeepers. And uh, if I was in goal, I don't go, hmm, you know, when it's <laughs> they change the keeper. I'm like, that's fine, that's fine. So either of them is, 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 is a great, great keeper. So, and there are, you know, some teams who watch in soccer. Look at Damien Rodriguez go. Here we go. Break away. Chattanooga coming into the box here. Couple of deeks, wants to fire. This one sent back. That's all right. Bit of maturity to slow it down. That's fine. On the close side. Robertson lets that one escape yep. over the touch line and he'll throw in now. We're about to come into the 30, 43rd minute of play here. Yep, Chattanooga spreading it across. Now Green driving in. Hernandez. Stratton. And Hernandez. Great CNC. ball. Down so along Hernandez the back of the pitch. And that's a, out of play. Wins a corner. It's all right. Chattanooga's turn to put the pressure on. And say Chattanooga have had maybe 75% or better of the possession. And that's not the first time they've baited him into creating a Chick-fil-A corner kick for Absolutely Chattanooga. Absolutely not. That, that's what we they do so well. Bermudez and Hernandez out there along the corner. Flurry of gold kits inside here. Just touch on there, uh, cleared by Charlotte, but the idea was good. Right. Siri's starting to get a little more aggressive on that back end, and they've really been working his side of the pitch. Yeah, Chattanooga, I think, will be. Up until half time will be. Look at this turn. Could be a Hernandez. chance for Chattanooga. This one yes. fired on net, and he'll find the twine. It's four nothing Chattanooga four nothing. as they score another goal here inside of <laughs> Finley Stadium. And how popular is that? Juan Hernandez getting the goal in the 44th minute, sliding it in from the left side. Here's another look at how that one unfolded. Let's see that again. Watch his drive. He took it all by himself. Look at that. And usually he's so unselfish and passes it. This time he just puts it in the goal, bounces it off the defender. Juanito, you are still number one, man. Well, at first I thought Damian Rodriguez <laughs> might have helped him out, but it just took an odd bounce yep. off of odd the keeper off right the there. off the defender. 4-0. We're going to start running away into a, a PlayStation score here, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, Juan Hernandez still got it. <laughs> we are into the 45th minute here of this first half of action. We'll take a halftime break here in just a moment. Yeah, and, uh, and we've talked a little bit about how the strategy might change or shift during that break, and you think we could see quite a bit of rotation. I think looking at the bench, uh, they made us rotate the bench and see 
11 fresh players for Charlotte, and that's fine. They want to, you know, they, everybody wants to get some playing time. They didn't come this way just to watch the game. Royal London were probably a bit more cautious. Um, obviously, please being formed up, he's not going to have to too many concerns. So, <laughs> um, but he may just rotate players to give them some time. Alec Rinson being a bit cavalier there. <laughs> Boy, he came way out there, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> so. Charlotte could have a bit of a chance here, trying to buy some space. Yeah, I'm not sure how much injury time we're going to be. That's out for a goal kick to Chattanooga, if any. The fourth official's got the board. A minute of extra time. There we go, we have a minute of extra time. So, right. A lot of times in front of us, they just play 45 minutes each side, and that's yeah. it. So there'll be a minute. But, uh, Chattanooga obviously in a comfortable spot. Quick feet along the touchline again. They were able to hem in Charlotte just a moment ago. Keep him from sending a cross yep. to the inside. Extra time sponsored by HHM. Need more time for your business? Contact HHM. on the throw and gets it right back. Really run the clock down here with any yeah, it looks like they're just going to kind of let this yep. slip away and go into That's half it. number two. Yeah. Robertson trying to send it up the pitch. This one will go out. Charlotte's eager to throw in. Referee blows the whistle. There it goes. That is the first half. 4-0 Chattanooga FC. What a great way for them to go in yeah, the locker that, room. That was a fun first half of action. So. Great fun. When it's a game with no arrival, like a friendly, this is what you see. Exciting soccer, open play, lots of drama, and uh, no complaints from us. Charlotte may have a few. We haven't got any. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we'll take a break and we'll be back with the second half of action. It's Nisa League soccer in a friendly match against Charlotte. The lead with Chattanooga going into the halftime break. With uh, two penalty kicks in the second and the 11th minute. Uh, the first one for a foul on Roddy Green being taken down by the keeper. The second one for a shirt pull on David Rodriguez. Both mistakes probably could have been avoided, but they happened. And Chris Bermudez buried the goal both times on the left-hand side of the net. No problems there. Um, we're putting uh, Charlotte on the ropes a little bit. And then it carried on. Roddy Green getting a, a super goal with an assist from Tate Robertson in the 28th minute. Tate sliding across the penalty box and uh, Roddy just burying it in the back of the net and finally a bit of individual skill in the 44th minute, Juan Hernandez, he still got it, individual goal where he just broke through from the edge of the penalty box, drove through in a six yard box, almost down to the byline and slipped it past the keeper, 4 0, look at these stats, shots on goal, six, four goals, Charlotte four shots, no goals and uh, those yellow cards too building up for Charlotte as well, so including the goalkeeper who uh, obviously has to be careful how he plays and doesn't get too, more, too much more aggressive. What we're thinking is Charlotte bought a big squad. They may well have switched out the entire squad for the second half so everybody gets some playing time, and that would make sense. I think they may have done that, and they've got some different players out. We'll see as the game develops who is out there for Charlotte. But, uh, this is also their development team, so it's part of their development to play games like this. Uh, whatever the result, it's still good practice for them and uh, they'll keep improving. So what we're saying at halftime, Charlotte uh, MLS team beat Philadelphia 4-0. Yeah, 4-0. Development team losing 4-0. Some kind of symmetry going on there. Something. Something like that. So it's the magic of Finley Stadium. <laughs> when we talked about the mental errors, you know, during the break, we were right, out there talking right. about it outside of the booth. Yeah, and yeah. There's a lot of mental errors happening, but those are things you can clean up, and the potential sure. is there, and that's what they're looking for. Exactly, and that's it. The coaches are watching how the players, what they do, how they react, if they make an error, how they recover. Yeah, there's a lot to learn. So, yeah. Charlotte trying to clear this one out right away. Chattanooga. Yep, Chattanooga in the yellow shirts, Charlotte in the grey. Like the unis here tonight, looking good. Sharp yep. for both clubs. Absolutely, so uh, chance for Charlotte. Here we go, firing, and this one covered. Straight out of Rainton, who gets on the ground and has that one under control. Didn't see any changes for Chattanooga. Same uh, starting 11 that came out for the second half. Uh, I expect Coach Unwood will probably rotate a few of the players, uh, give them some playing time. 
Um, but Jack Lewis got a good bench. Well, that's up there, 13 on the bench for, for Charlotte. I'm sure they're all going to want some playing time. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of familiar faces back out here on the pitch for Charlotte. On that first half of action. Rolls over the touchline, so the throw in will come from Chattanooga FC. We talked a lot about in the first half about the upcoming playoff game here at home. We did, yep, yep, that's going to be on uh, Sunday the 30th of, of October. So if you've got Halloween plans, cancel them and come to that. <laughs> That'd be a lot Sounds better. good to me, I'll be here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if you want to wear a costume, that'll be fine. We might have to. Do we have to wear costumes, even though we're doing the broadcast? I'll get back to you on that one we'll, later. We'll have to hook up. I'll on get. That I'll one. get back to you on that. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, get your hopes up. <laughs> or cru oh yeah, crush. Oh, yeah, crush. Two games left here on the schedule for Chattanooga as it stands. They'll hit the road and battle the Michigan Stars on the 15th. You'll be able to watch that one live online. Yep, 11 Sports bring that game, and then we'll be here on the 30th bringing you the, uh, the playoff game, but really you want to be here for that kind of game. No kidding. Because the atmosphere will be electric in the stadium. Charlotte had a bit of a chance there. Chattanooga's turn to get on the attack. Looking this one around, there's one outside. Looking to center this up. Ladled it back behind him. Back towards the center of the pitch here. Sent to the close end. Good recovery there from a short pass. There's a nice through ball. Now, Rush I knew get it across. Boy, I thought he wanted it. Held off. One quick pass. Now Damon. a bit of a chance. Sent inside and cleared away by the Charlotte FC defender. Yeah, Damon Rodriguez driving at the defense again. He must be driving the max, he's so quick. <laughs> Feeling the heat along the far touch line. CFC going to reset a bit here. But, uh, not really letting Charlotte give a touch on the ball. Chattanooga stringing together pass after pass after pass. Tonight's broadcast here on 11 Sports brought to you by Coca-Cola. Thanks for tuning in and joining us for this match. Charlotte trying to get something strung together here. Yeah. A little bit of a collision on the close side. Yeah, that was one great strap and they've taken quickly. What have Charlotte got? And easily deflected away. Yeah, pushed out by Nick Spielman for a corner. So Charlotte handled this corner. Chick fil corner kick for Charlotte, their first. I'll be interested to see later on in the game, Gabe, how fitness plays are conditioning this, because the Chattanooga's conditioning is really good. I want to see what the conditioning's like for the Charlotte players, too. Here we go, the cross sent inside, and that one's off the mark. Charlotte, from the back end of the pitch now, looking inside. Thought he had a chance right there. This one easily deflected away. Bit of a miss hit there. Chattanooga with time to uh, get it away. Foul on the far side there. And you might have seen it on the edge of your screen if you're watching from home here. The entire bench of Charlotte FC warming up down off the edge of the pitch. Yep. Along the close touch line, here comes Chattanooga. Great Stratton trying to put it through to Luke Ferreira. Yeah, he was looking to split the difference there, just he couldn't was. quite pull it off. Siri goes down. A little bit of push in there. <laughs> Nothing unusual in that little game of soccer.
Heenan with it. Working to the close side, it's Siri again. He's feeling the heat. Trying to get it off to Perchimus, intercepted by Chattanooga. Charlotte could have another chance here. Battling with it. Down on the edge of the box, there's a long ball that goes high and wide. Yeah, Charlotte having to shoot from the edge of the box, not able to get close enough in to get uh, more accuracy, so they're trying these longer shots. That first one in the uh, first half of the hit the bar was very impressive. They really slammed that one and beat Alec Riddington, but uh, the woodwork saved us. That was really their best best chance of the game so far. Yeah, it was a good look, and they've, they've mm -hmm. had a couple here tonight, but just not a lot of consistency in creating those looks, and obviously that's so important when you're talking about a game of percentages. Right, not able to... Uh, make the, the efforts count. We've got a foul down here on the near side. Bit of a collision there. Man yeah. slaughter eyes for Charlotte FC. Yeah. And Roddy Green over that one. Coaching staff looking at the injured player. Well, they could make their changes. They've got plenty of players to change, so if he's hurt, they can change him out. So that's good. Speaking of changes, did, did Coach Underwood make a lot of changes at the half in your mind? Not, not at all. No, he didn't change anything at all. Same team came out for the second half. Obviously, he's happy with that. Nobody's out warming up, so... Looks like he's sticking with it. Yeah, that, that's Rod's style. If he finds something that works, he'll, you know, he won't tinker with it. He's not a, a tinkerer like some managers and coaches. He'll, he's like, let the players do, the, do what they do. He knows he, yeah. Caught up the far right, right there. He knows once they're out there, he can't, you know, he can't <laughs> do anything to help once it's, it's on them. So <laughs> he lets him do it. Yeah, I love his mindset. Love the positive attitude. Oh yeah. Charlotte had a bit of a chance started there. Chattanooga yeah. FC strips it away. Yeah. No foul called. He keeps moving. Referee's been good about letting play move as much as he can do. That's been good. The game flow nicely. Foul there, but advantage played. Bermudez gets a knock again. He's a popular lad for getting taken out. <laughs> nice and calm. Green on the close side, yeah. yeah, trying to get that one away. Get Nick Spielman's experience there. Back to Alec Rangson. Oh, Alex, Alex. Alex, cool. <laughs> cool guy. <laughs> That was a cold move right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stratton driving through. Great ball across. Chattanooga. Bit of a convoy here. Could be a chance. Sends it to the backside. Hernandez open. He's going to come in, drive in, get a shot, get a shot away. Looking to create some space. Still not cleared. Two Charlotte defenders right there. There's a header. Finally getting it away, but not far enough. <laughs> Charlotte clears it for a moment. Kept down there in the danger zone for them. Chattanooga looking to set something up. Look There's the feed Hernandez towards the box to and then roll out of play. Yeah, great, no, great play from Menendez to Rodriguez and then steps out for Chattanooga corner on the Chick-fil-A corner in the 55th minute on play. Still 4-0 to Chattanooga. Looks like they're sending Chris Bermudez over there. Yep. He's going over there with Juan Hernandez doing for all of those. So, and everybody in the, uh, the Charlotte 18-yard box, apart from our defenders. Defenders are far enough away from the corner kick and tell the Chattanooga players to hurry up and take it. <laughs> yeah. They're wasting a bit of time. <laughs> it's like, hurry up, go on. Go on. Muta's not happy with that one. Hernandez flips it back. 
Chattanooga trying to create a chance here. Charlotte with a takeaway. Charlotte getting the ball away. Can they make a break? Boy, that was a gorgeous tackle to strip the ball away from CFC. Very calm there. Yeah, Chattanooga able to control it and slow the progress down. Well, after seeing this next Pro club here, play for a half. We're, we're, we're getting deep into the second half of action. Do you have any thoughts on the future of these players? What do you think, Simon? It's so early to tell with these young lads. I mean, obviously they're playing at a good standard, possibly being picked up by Charlotte, but uh, this is where they, I guess you want to shake down when they come down and see how if they develop further, if they're early developers, they're late developers. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's not the last place they'll play. I don't think that they'll develop with Charlotte. Some will stay. You do get some players that stay for life. Some, you know, stay here and go on the journey. And so, um, hard to know. Um, I wouldn't like to sit and get any of them, really. And uh, who knows? One of them might end up playing it. <laughs> four, year, four or five years down the line, you go, oh, this guy's playing Charlotte. So, never say never. Well, here we go, Simon. Could be a chance. This one is deflected away by a yep. bus of gold unis. Yep, off the wall. And that one's safe. Next for Chanu to throw on the far side. The wall did its job there very well. Absolutely. Speaking of gold, kind of a, a fun fact, Charlotte was the location of the first ever gold rush in the United States. That was in 1799. The Carolina gold rush began after the nation's first golden nugget was found by a 12-year-old boy. A second nugget was found four years later in 1803, which led to Carolina farmers checking their land for gold, mining in local stream beds, and that lasted almost three decades, that gold rush in Carolina. Didn't know that. How interesting. I thought it was all in California. That was the first one down okay. in Carolina. Oh, well. well. That's unbelievable footwork. Yeah, that's really good for Greg Stratton. The folks in possession, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, but always keeping it at their feet. Just Bermudez getting around them. It's magic watching him play, isn't it? <laughs> He's really good. <laughs> Charlotte getting rid of me at a couple of substitutions. Can't tell you the names, folks. They haven't got names in their shirts or numbers, so we'll just have to... we we'll shout down, hey, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> All we need is a pitch like commentator, he could do that stuff for us. <laughs> well, she could do that stuff for us. Yeah, an analyst down along the bench would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Working this one around, close side over to Stratton. Chattanooga tried to split the difference between a pair of defenders there. Charlotte gets the takeaway. Into the 60th minute here. Here comes Charlotte. And forced away from the goal by the defenders. That one slipped into the near near post, but. Yeah, Siri fired the long ball there, and that yeah. was a good look. Yeah, it wasn't very powerful. I they were going that one up pretty easily, but uh, good defending forced the player away from the front of the goal towards the sides. They can't get a good shot in. That was as effective as attacking him, really, just to force him away into the wings where the angle is much narrower. Through the center of the pitch, Chattanooga Football Club trying to get something working here. Sent back by Siri aggressively. Spillman got out of control. Well, I would say Charlotte looks much more put together here in this second half. Yeah, they do. They look a lot, lot better in the second half. Still a few loose ends to tie up, but they do look better. That's a great long ball. Hernandez chasing it in. Rodriguez, sorry, not Hernandez. Chattanooga still with possession. Bermudez. Has he got any support? He's going to do it on his own. He's got support from Hernandez. There he goes. Here we go. Juan Hernandez could have a little bit of space to work with, taken away from him. He is, yeah, so dangerous. <laughs> Fight for along the top. 
touch line. Charlotte maintains possession here. Working it down into the attacking end of the pitch, trying to clear it to the corner there. Vucic runs out for a goal kick. Ethan Corrin being smart, letting it go out. 60 minutes played, still 4-0 to Chattanooga FC here in this friendly match, brought to you by Lynn Sports. Charlotte about to make some changes. Put on some fresh legs. Fresh legs, fresh faces. Yep. Temperature's gone down to a comfortable 66 degrees. Very nice playing soccer. In. Supposed to drop all the way down to 63 degrees here tonight in the post game. Perfect. Just great right for soccer. Chattanooga working to get this one away from their own net down there. Battle for it down in the corner. Centered back up to Reddington, who will clear it. Yeah, Body Green looking to spread that one. Ooh, blocked out by Chattanooga. I mean, Charles Mithill. Charlotte trying to get it moving again. The flick on, but the only person there is at Reddington to pick it up. Reddington and Chattanooga get this one back on the move. Lots of ticky-tacky stuff. That first half mm -hmm. was really fast, a lot of action. Yeah, Charlotte was suddenly working on closing people down and pressing, and that's really coming through, and there's a good ball. Now here's a lot of space for Chattanooga as well, a couple of attackers down there. Roddy Green coming in. Working with it Throwing carefully. Somebody open. Set Bermude. it up, there's a blast, and that one had too much juice yeah. on it, just goes high, wide, and right. Bermuda's rushed that one a little bit, but uh, Roddy Green had Ferreira open in the box too, but uh, Charlotte getting better about getting players back. In the first half, they weren't as good about that. And, they're giving the uh, Chattanooga attackers far too much space, and they got punished for it. Sure what next through the center circle here. Nifty move right there. He's got handles. But uh, Chattanooga, able to get everybody back. They got time to get all the players back, and. Charlotte attackers look up as a wall of yellow shirts, so it's hard to find a place to get a shot away. This one's skying up the pitch and staying just inside of the touchline before being headed out of play. Chattanooga with a throw in. Trying to get on the move here. They had a chance just a few moments ago. Too much power on it, went wide. Foul called against Nick Spielman there, just a bit of shirt pulling. Chattanooga sending the, uh, the bench guys out to warm up. We may see a change or two, we'll see. Uh, so far, Chattanooga holding their own. Charlotte bringing on two more players. Fresh legs again, and good chance to rotate. We're into the 65th minute here inside of Finley Stadium where it's 4-0 Chattanooga FC leading the MLS Next Pro Team, Charlotte FC. More fresh legs and fresh faces here. And offside on Roddy Green there. Just got a bit too far ahead, but it's a good idea with that free kick. He knew it right away, too. Oh, yeah. Yep. Chattanooga FC leading all NISA teams coming into this friendly today. In games played and goals, 23 games played for Chattanooga FC. They've delivered 41 scores on the season so far in Nisa play. Stratton there with a good interception. 
Takes two of them to take him out. No foul call by the referee. Charlotte trying to string something together here. Towards the center of the pitch. Not a whole lot of space to work with. Yeah, Chattanooga doing what they do best, closing the space down so there is no room to, to maneuver. Now, Green sends Ferreira off. Ferreira is, uh oh. It's a bit of a chance race. here. Ferreira, and he gets oh. taken down from behind, and that should be a no. No card. Yeah, Ferreira, Ferreira made a great move. Taken down from behind. That's usually a card defense, but the referee's letting it go on. Ferreira's still down in pain in the box. He split the difference between two yeah. defenders right there and was trying to get a shot off. Very quick. I'm not sure if he was grabbed that from behind or there was just a collision. He there is down a, and appears to be in pain. There was a foul from behind. We're going to take another look Let's at this right again. here, Simon. He turns inside and then yep. gets bundled over. Yeah. As far as the referee didn't give a free kick for that. Medical staff taking a look at him here in the 68th minute. Chattanooga players getting the water break. And he looks to be all right. Yeah, he's, he's made a tough stuff. <laughs> Talked to Luke a few times, he's tough. <laughs> but uh, still no fun to go down at high speed. It's, uh, he knocks it out of you a little bit and shakes you up. So. Glad to see him up and coming off of the pitch under his own power. So the MLS club is an expansion club as well, Simon. Mm -hmm. Pretty exciting stuff for the growth of soccer across North America and worldwide. Yeah, you got to look at the bigger picture. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, um, American soccer still needs to develop a bigger pool of players here for the World Cup and other events too. So um, without making them go abroad to play, they can play in the States. That'd be great. So that, this, is, this is part of the the road to that and it's it's a long way but it's, it's they're on the right road um i think i said in the first half nearly all the european latin american teams over the world have a, a reserve squad and uh, they get to play each other and stay in shape and uh, there's a chance there's boy a good the chance. centering yeah. ball is deflected so, away by the defender yeah it's an effective model to have a, a reserve team or a next team so it gives you a pool of talent not just the, the starting 11 and your, your main squad. We so. feature the crown mm -hmm. on the logo of Charlotte FC throughout our broadcast here tonight, the four-point crown, honoring the Queen City's original namesake, Queen Charlotte. Each of the crown spires recognize the four wards of Uptown Charlotte, and the club really hammers home the rich history of the city mm -hmm. and their belief in representing it. And they also indicate on their website that the black and white on contrast commands a contemporary and forward-thinking aesthetic that complements that historical logo. Mm -hmm. I love the meaning behind all the different logos we see throughout NISA League play and MLS play. Yeah, each one's got a story. If you dig a bit deeper, it's quite interesting. <laughs> Some of the names we get. There's a great ball. And again, Ferreira puts on the afterburners, but the keeper's there first. Dorchin sends that one away and up into the bleachers. Yep. 70 minutes played, still 4 0 to Chattanooga, 20 to go. Charlotte looking for a way back into the game, but not uh, successful just yet. Chattanooga still with the same 11 that started. And as we get into these late stages of the, the match, this is where, say, the fitness will stay, start to be a factor. Uh, the, the mental fitness and the physical fitness. So. Battle forward along the touch line on the far end of the pitch. Back and forth they go on possession here. 
Chattanooga centering this one back, getting reset. Green with it. He won't keep it for long either. Reddington sends it to the far end, and now Chattanooga trying to get on the go here. Charlotte will intercept that pass. Yeah, Chattanooga's trying to play the diagonal balls in the gaps. Charlotte's starting to get the hang of those and block them out. But uh, there's a nice touch on from Ethan Coran in the safety. One more touch from Spielman, Stratton. Back to Hernandez. Just good, good. Confident play from Chattanooga. That's a nice ball, too. Now, it's Hernandez. On his own, still fighting two off. <laughs> Gives it away a throw in the end. Runs out of room. Bermudez has gone down. It may be cramp. And it's like Charlotte. Get ready to make some more subs. Yeah, it would be surprising if Chris does have cramp. He's run himself crazy all, all game, so he hasn't stopped running at all. So. A couple more changes coming mm -hmm. here for Charlotte FC. Yep. So everybody's getting some playing time, which was one of the objects of this, this game tonight, so that's good. Like Green needs stretched out as well. The medical staff. Yeah. To get him back into playing shape here. Sure. He has been electric. He's been fun to watch here tonight. Okay, yeah, checking over. It. Yep, Hernandez getting looked at. Let's make sure they're all okay. Getting plenty of fluids too. It's always important. When you run so much. Coaching staff quite comfortable. Not obviously get out of their chairs much tonight, to be honest. They've been pretty much watching the game like spectators. <laughs> Charlotte trying to get to work offensively here. They've had a few chances throughout the course of this contest already. They've looked much more efficient here in this second half of play. Mm -hmm. They have. On the back side, there's a long one, and this is gathered up by Reddington. He dives and pins this along the pitch. Yep, that was a little better. Still nothing that uh, troubled Alec Reddington too much. And foul on the far side. On Corin. Quick foul there before they can get yep. moving. Really. Calmly back to Reddington. Calmly plays it out again. Bermudez, who's fine now. So, 75 minutes gone, still four up for Chattanooga. Not seeing too many signs of Charlotte getting near the goal. Watch them surprise me at a goal, but <laughs> still not getting in that close as they'd like to be, I'm sure. Chattanooga playing possession. for a chance to set uh, Green and Ferreira free at the front and they'd love a chance to get back on goal. Gorgeous little tackle there by Charlotte mm -hmm. taking mm -hmm. that one away. Yep. Good long ball that and it's going to go out for a goal kick. Yeah, he was looking for a chance on the back end and just couldn't hook up with him right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well the idea was good, just a bit lacking in the execution. Reddington will clear this one out. Into our 76th minute of play, 4 0 Chattanooga Football Club lead over the MLS next squad for Charlotte FC. And we 
brought it up earlier during the broadcast. Just a reminder, you can catch the next contest of Chattanooga FC. Nisa League road match for them. They'll be on 11 Sports up in Michigan battling the Michigan Stars. Then following that, they will host a home playoff game. You can catch that with us here on 11 Sports presented by Coca-Cola. And we'll be back for that one. Gabriel Shry and Simon Neal. That's on October 30th. And if you come to the game, it sounds like you should wear a costume. I think you'd be a good time to wear a costume. <laughs> I, I think you and I might have to dress up for that one. I don't know if we can convince the whole crew to wear a costume. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, that game will be at 5 o'clock. It won't be uh, the usual 7.30 kill. It'll be 5 p.m. Eastern. So a little different time from you. Should we come at 7.30, it will be over. <laughs> yeah. And we'd, we'd love for you to be with us here on 11 Sports. You can catch us live on the call, but you can also get tickets at cfctix.com. I'd love you to be in the stadium. That would be a game you don't want to miss. <laughs> Absolutely. It's going to be rambunctious in here. Electric. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, one thing I love about this club that I think is very impressive is they adopt the local causes of the community and they elevate them and use their platform to, to further the great work done by so many charities and nonprofit in the area, Simon. That's right. That's something we always do. We focus on that with our calls of the night every game. We've featured 14 of those during the season so far. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very important to do that to show that uh, it's part of the community. And we've done outreach with, you know, soccer teams at uh, oh, right across the box look at that Boy, no that was a one dangerous there. one yeah with soccer teams from high schools and local soccer you know clubs and stuff um but yeah those are where the future players come from you need to you know work with the community charlotte could have a chance here cross kick and this one oh. not cleared intercepted and sent into the twine that is a goal for charlotte fc it's yeah. four to one four to one yeah bad clearance meets and core in there unfortunately and they just took advantage of that so in the uh, 78th minute, sorry, the 79th minute, Charlotte get a goal back. Rumble, young man, rumble. Yeah. And here's another look at that. It was quite the dicey goal. He it fired just, a shot. Uh, yeah, just not a great clearance, and then took advantage of that, unfortunately, and got to gotta feel bad for that one going on. So Hernandez coming off, McGrath coming on for... Chattanooga for the last uh, 10 minutes or so, so out to play in the midfield in the attack. Had a chance to catch up with him before the game. Yep, he's very excited about the playoffs too. So he's, he's looking forward to that. Well, prior to the score, we were talking about some of the causes of the night and, uh, and how impressed yeah. we are with those. Right. One of the local partners of Chattanooga FC that have been elevated by this club is the zoo. Yes. And so I was doing prep for this game and reading about Charlotte, and I thought it was interesting. Charlotte is the largest metropolitan area in the United States that doesn't have a zoo. Hmm. And yeah. that's one thing, as you know, that we are very proud of here in southeast Tennessee. That's right. Chattanooga FC has put a lot behind that zoo. It's a community zoo. Warner Park, built by the city of Chattanooga. Back in 1937, it was just two monkey cages really? when they first originally made it. Yeah, they were housing a, a couple of monkeys here. Huh, how interesting. 13 so that, would been, that would have been a, uh, a WPA project, I guess, back in 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so it's come from just two cages to now it's a 13-acre park with giraffes. Yep. Huge lizards. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Yep. Oh, and your first yellow card there for Chattanooga. A little collision there along the far touch line. He looks to be all right. Yeah, Greg Stratton. No, Tate Robson picking that one up. But uh, luckily they don't count towards knee to play at this. So, so uh, yellow card sponsored by our friends Captain White McGarvey Eye Care. If you got foul vision, go to Captain White McGarvey. Jack, we've got a couple more players warming up. I don't know if we'll see him come on the field or not. Meanwhile, got a free kick. Lots Charlotte. of gold out front. Swung this one. In. McGrath clears it. A great defensive effort by Alex McGrath right there. Another chance for Charlotte here, trying to send that inside. 
green with it for a moment before he'll just clear it around a pair of defenders. Charlotte biding their time near that close touchline. They'd love to get another. It's a getaway. And then just tries to break it up, but can't. That one goes back to Reddington. All right. A lot more press tonight from uh, Charlotte. Second half has certainly been a lot more aggressive pressing the, uh, the Chattanooga defence. I think they're probably regretting it didn't do that much in the first half and uh, have paid for it. Hang on, and the referee's got a foul there and uh, taken too quickly, so he's bringing that one back. The player may need some medical help here. Let's see. Yeah, I think we did have a little collision there. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, I think he's okay. It's a bump. And substitution for Chattanooga coming up. Couple of players coming on. We've got uh, Rodriguez and Hugo Martinez coming on. Roddy Green off. Hugo Martinez comes on. Roddy Green, soul electric here tonight. Absolutely been great. He's got a performance he can hang his hat on. Damian Rodriguez coming off. Frankie Rodriguez coming on. <laughs> it's Rodriguez for Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, Fabian, sorry, not Frankie. What about going Frankie? I think you're Frankie Martinez. Fabian, sorry, Fabian. <laughs> Charlotte working this one around in a bit of a horseshoe shape here, trying to create some space. Chattanooga back in a bit of a defensive bubble. Four to one here in the 84th minute of play. We did see an extra minute added at the end of half number one, so might see a couple of extra minutes here. Charlotte finding their way blocks. You'll see they're trying to come down, having to go backwards, try and change to the other side of the field. Just uh, finding their way blocked by yellow shirts. Chattanooga able to pick that one off on the tackle there. Only for a moment, though, it's taken right back by Charlotte FC. Shot at the goal, but not a strong one. Easily gathered by uh, Alec Reddington there. He set the long ball on net towards Reddington. Chattanooga going to try to get to work here. Charlotte trying to build some space from the far side. Battling down into the box, and the cross right there is headed away carefully by Chattanooga. It's a nice cross, but Spielman's on the end of that one, able to clear it. Let's see the try again. That one runs out, I think, for a no. That's a, that's that was very close. Yeah, that was a goal kick. It ran out over the line. Gives me a chance to reset. Yeah, Charlotte coach, very animated. Rora Underwood sitting in his chair looking like he's having a day at the beach right now. He's very <laughs> relaxed. <laughs> so it's a bit of a contrast there. Nice to have a day off for Rod, I'm sure. It's uh, not quite a day off, but it's, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you scored so many goals in the first half and set, set the bar so high. It's, uh, yeah. Spielman using his skill there. Very nice. Showing off the footwork now. Yeah. Charlotte has they a are. chance. They are showing off the footwork. It's uh, late in the game. But it's good to see. Good to send that inside. Taken away by Chattanooga. Oop. Foul there. And another yellow card for Charlotte. They're picking them up tonight. Yeah, you know it's going to happen. Chris Bermuda's the one getting knocked <laughs> down. Kepperman White and McGarvey yellow card got foul vision. Kepperman White and McGarvey can help with that.
Here's a long ball for Chattanooga. Unable to hook up right there. Ball is loose. Dorchin is out front. Boy, he had a chance right there. And Charlotte, with a heads-up defensive really? play, able to get back and shut that down. That was very close to being goal number five. Charlotte tried to and come to the close there. touch line Ferreira, right there. great touch to Hernandez. He can't quite get hold of it. <laughs> that would have been a good move. Charlotte's turn to come back. They're really, uh, Charlotte working hard now as they see the clock ticking down. Coming up on the 88th minute here inside of Finley Stadium. It's 4-1 Chattanooga Football Club lead over Charlotte. To Reddington. Stratton got time, space, looks up. Riding the touch line here, he won't keep it for long. Yeah, see the, the Charlotte press is a lot better than it was in the first half. They're a lot closer and a few little bumps and bruises there. Well, Simon, I think Charlotte has a lot of bright spots. I'm. I'm impressed with this squad. Sure, sure. They cleaned up those mental errors quite a bit here in half number two. I think they've got a lot to look forward to with this program. Absolutely, and they'll build on this. I mean, win or lose, like I said, it's, it's a learning experience, and this will be a, there's a lot. They'll probably watch the playback of this and think, mm, yeah, we should be better on that, and we'll see where the gaps they left are in the, the defense. And, uh, yeah, that's what a development team is for, Gabe, for things like this, for developing, and so this is a good place to do it. Plus, it gives you a gauge of how, what you have to do, what needs to be done to play teams of a, the level you want to be at. You can you can watch Chattanooga and go, yeah, we need to be doing this like Chattanooga does it, and it'll just be yeah, a good learning experience. Every day is a school day, that's what Rod Underwood told me, and I said, you're right, every day, no matter how old you are, there's always something to learn. So. There's always young men coming through this who want to learn the game, and so this is this is part of the education. Chattanooga with here, just along the center circle. Coming up on the 90th minute of play as they lead 4-1. This one skeetering along the touchline as the whistle will sound. Foul on uh, Ferreira there. And they've got Russian to take it into the last minute of play. Don't know how much extra time there'll be, but uh, can't be a whole lot. Yeah, they only added one minute there for that first half of play, yeah. and they might just let it go here. Well, they're friendly, yeah, it's, it's not, you know, critical. <laughs> so, but it's enjoyable to watch. I mean, it's, you know, the players enjoy playing, and everybody stayed in the stands to watch the game. It's getting a bit cold now. It's getting down in the mid-60s, so it's cooled down. But uh, nobody's, you know, leaving. <laughs> They're enjoying the game. Good interception. That's the kind of thing they should Charlotte be doing. Those interceptions and reading the ball better like that. Dorchin centers that one up. Charlotte FC here in the waiting moments. Coming down the pitch, it is intercepted. Tackle away by Chattanooga momentarily. Taken right back by Charlotte. Could be a late chance right here, trying to center that up and headed towards the close touch line in the corner. Stratton and Spielman combined to get rid of that one. That'll do it for regulation. And we're gonna get two minutes of added time here. Okay, two minutes. We'll see if uh, Charlotte wanna make something out of that or if they're able to. That's a good Ferreira, look at that. Oh, that is footwork right there. Runs out of space. <laughs> Look at that. Brilliant bit of footwork from Luke Ferreira. And a time brought to you by HHM. Yep, need more time for your business? Contact HHM. Whistle sounds again here late. Just over 60 seconds left to go here in added time as Charlotte FC trying to string one last attack together. 
This one stays just inside of the touchline for him under the pressure from Chattanooga right there. CFC wanted to clear that one and it is sent over the touchline and into the bench. The fans are loving it, Simon. Absolutely, they're having a great time. The hooligans are making a lot of noise. I would recommend time for the game, the playoff yeah, final on the 30th and joining them because it's just a, a great place to be. It'll be a cold evening it'll be the end of October, but you know what? You'll keep warm with them. They don't stop for 90 minutes. <laughs> Absolutely. We understand if you can't be here and you have to tune in and join us on 11 Sports, but we'd love for you to visit cfctix.com. Get out here and fill seats. So that'll just about do it and bring us to full time I here between so. Chattanooga Football Club and Charlotte Football Club. Simon, what are your what are your final thoughts here on this 4-1 victory for CFC? Yeah, a great ego boost for Chattanooga. Feels good for them. Uh, great to see some of the players who don't get as much time playing and showing what they can do, which we've certainly seen tonight. Uh, some of the players who spend more time on the bench show they really can play. They've got the right what it takes to play for Chattanooga FC. It's great. Gives Rod Underwood a difficult problem when he has to pick his next team, I'd say, because he has to factor in these guys who played hard and got the goals. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, enjoyable to watch, good friendly. I think Charlotte learned a lot from that game. We enjoyed it, fans enjoyed it. It's what you wanted. So, yeah, thank you for joining us tonight on the broadcast on 11 Sports. It's been great to have you along, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in about a month. Fantastic. That'll wrap up our coverage here of professional NISA League soccer for Simon Neal and our entire crew. I'm Gabriel Shry. Your final score, Chattanooga FC 4-1. All games airing on the 11 sports platforms are streaming live and are archived inside of the 11 sports app. This presentation brought to you by Coca-Cola. Thank you for tuning in. Good night, folks.